Hello, this is Scott Vaughn. In this video, I'll look at the algebra of exponential and log functions and look at the exponential growth of coronavirus cases. And I'm recording this on March 25th in 2020. The data that I'm going to use uh, for this video is from Johns Hopkins uh, University at this Coronavirus Resource Center you can find at coronavirus.jhu.edu and um, well I guess this is the map but you can start at their main page I guess that's here so this is total number of cases when I click here I can look at the total number of cases in the US and I'm gonna focus on that in this video so we have currently 55,000 in the US now you can click on each country get the data for each of those countries and I'm looking at the uh, graph over here on the right as well. So currently in the US 55,238 cases and one of the first things that catches your eye of course is the total number of deaths in the US due to this virus and one of the math uh, calculations we can do is just divide how many deaths out of the total number of cases 802 divided by 55,000, 802 divided by 55,238, that's 0.0145. So that's 1.45%. So one thing that's at least somewhat uh, a relief is that that's a fairly low percentage. Now I think what I'll focus on primarily with this video is this exponential growth in the number of cases that you can see in this graph over here on the right hand side in the lower right corner. And as you kind of um, move the cursor over some of these over the graph you can see different dates the number of cases that we have. So it really starts to pick up right there in the middle of March and it's going up we would say exponentially at this um, you know during this period so what I what I'll do is I'll just take a few data points because I you know it's gonna be uh, <laughs> a lot to type in every one of these day and, and it's you know relative to this portion of the graph this is all appears pretty level pretty flat compared to where it really picks up so what I did was I decided to start at the first of March March 1st I see 98 cases and then I'm just going to sort of pick a few dates over this interval here up until the last uh, data point that we have, which is March 23rd, where we have, 50, uh, it says 53.7K, in other words, 53,700. So this is what, what I'll do is I'll write a few of these data points down and then I'm going to type them into Desmos and look at that graph and find an exponential curve that fits that data and then talk about that a little bit and how we can interpret it. So the data values that I'll use I'll start with March 1st at 98 and then I'll just go over to March 7 where I have 518 cases recorded and then I'll look at March 15 that's 4.6 thousand, uh, 4 thousand, 4 thousand six hundred, and then I'll just take the 18th, right here, 13,700, and then I'll use this last data point, the 23rd, and I'll just put those data values into Desmos and look at those points and fit those points with a with an exponential curve. Okay, so I'm moving over to Desmos.com. It's a nice graphing uh, utility online. And if you want to type in uh, data, you can go to this little plus and table. And now what we can do is we'll say just counting days uh, on day one, let's say March 1st, uh, we had 98 cases re reported. And then we'll go, uh, we'll just jump to the 7th. And that was 518 cases. On the 15th, I see recorded 4,600 on the 18th 13,700 and the last data point I'm using the 23rd we're up to 53,700 
Now, none of those show up in this little uh, window over here. So what we can do is go to this um, settings uh, gear uh, button here. And what I'll do is I'll say, well, I'll graph up to, let's go up to like 30 days on the horizontal scale. And on the vertical scale, we need to go up to maybe 60,000 or maybe higher. Let's put the upper bound on the window up at a 100,000 like that. All right, so now you can see those data points starting to show up. Now, what we can do is analyze this growth, uh, this exponential growth, and look at what is the um, doubling rate and what is the percentage daily growth. So it just happened, I just finished this series of videos on compound interest for the Math 140 class. And of course, as I'm going through that, I'm thinking about exponential growth and compound growth and uh, growth rates. And so th this is exactly the same math that I'm using in finance. Now I'm applying to studying this data of the number of cases and this um, growth rate in the number of cases. So in order to analyze that, um, on, on Desmos, one of the really amazingly powerful and useful tools we have here is to find a curve of best fit. So, uh, and, and assuming an exponential model, because that's um, what it appears to be, so that's a, that's a sort of scientific decision. And then once I make that decision that it appears like an exponential curve, we can do the math that will tell us uh, logically what those values would have to be if there was an exponential curve that fits those points. So what you do is you just type in y1 and when, when you here when I type in y1 it just it knows to put the subscript and then you need the tilde to tell it that so the tilde is that symbol there that's going to tell it to do a, a, a curve of best fit and the one that I want to do is the exponential where I'll have some parameter a that is sort of like your initial starting amount in the model, and then I'll say times b to a power, and then I'll say, and I have to do x1 so that it knows to look at that data. We can see that it's generating the graph right there, and um, let's see if I can change the color. Yeah, okay. So the first things that you look at here um, are this r squared that tells me a measure of how good this fit is. Uh, one would be perfect, so this is a pretty good fit, and we have these parameters A and B that I can now read in terms of the um, the exponential model, right? So, so A is sort of like an initial value. If you put in zero for for the uh, x value, that would be sort of where we're starting. So, sort of at time zero in this model, I had 80 k or 79 cases, and this is the growth factor. It's going up about um, at a growth factor of one point. 3, 3, let's say, which is going to tell me that it's increasing at about 33% a day because these are uh, days. So 33% increase each day roughly if you round off. Okay, so another thing that we could do here is to calculate the compound growth rate. In this case, the compound daily growth rate. In this formula, R is the compound growth rate. A n is the amount at some time n. A zero is some initial amount, and n is a number of equal time periods. In this case, we'll make them days. And I had just used this formula in the videos that I just finished for the Math 140 class in finance, in calculating compound uh, growth and rates of return in um, finance. So it's exactly the same math that I was using there that we can now turn our attention to looking at this growth rate in these cases of the coronavirus. So in this particular example, let's put in the numbers that we have so far from the data we, we saw. We'll have R growth rate, and let's take the time, the future amount to be, or the time, you know, at some point at later, like uh, current, the last data point that we have is the 53,700 cases. Let's take our initial value as 98, uh, March 1st, and then let's go with 23 days uh, period here and calculate this. So this is really the 23rd root of this fraction and this comes out to be, let's round it off to, well it's about 0.315. So about 0.32. 
that is about 32%. So just based on that initial and final value, we have a 32% uh, daily growth rate. That daily growth rate of 32% is pretty much in line. It's pretty much in line with what we saw here in Desmos uh, based on all of these uh, additional data values. About 32, 33% daily growth. Now, let's investigate this question. How many days does it take for this, uh, n the number of cases to double? And one way that I'll answer that sort of uh, very generally here is to create a, a model, a general, like, I'll say, uh, exponential growth can be written in this form, 1 plus r. So r is some growth rate, and x is the number of days. And I'll try to figure out when that's uh, try to rewrite that in this form where I look at a doubling of the quantity where here D is this doubling time and X is the number of days. So by writing it this way I can solve for either R in terms of D or D in terms of R. I think what I'll do is I'll solve for the doubling time in terms of the growth rate. So rewriting the left hand side I'll leave that the same and write this as 2 to the 1 over d power to a power x. So all I really need to do is figure out when this 1 plus r is equal to 2 to the power 1 over d. Now the way that we solve for an exponent is we use log functions and we can use any base. In this case it doesn't really matter what base there's, we use because um, generally we would use base 10 or base E. So I'll use base E, which is the natural log. So I'll do the natural log of both sides, like this. It's the property of the natural log that allows me to bring this exponent down in front. So I'll have ln. And now solving for D, what I'll do is multiply D on this side and divide by this quantity ln of 1 plus r. So D is equal to the ln of 2 over the ln of 1 plus r. So for any given growth rate, now I know what the doubling time is. As an example, if we had a growth rate of, let's say, 32% a day, what's that doubling time? You'd have 1 plus 0.32. That's roughly 2.5, so every two and a half days. When the growth rate is 32% a day. So we could see that in the graph. So in the graph that I have right now on the screen, what I've done is I've just compared these two different models, and they're very close, either starting on day one at 98 cases, March 1st, 98 cases, and growing by 32% a day, or starting at day zero at 79, according to the uh, exponential regression that I got from Desmos. It's pretty much the same uh, path, as you can see there, uh, starting at 79 on day zero, and growing 33% a day. These are both very accurate uh, models for the data that we have. Um, I guess it's right there in front of me, so I'll, I'll mention it, but this is pretty scary what's happening here. This is like day 25, uh, and we're up there around 100,000, a little, you know, passing 100,000. Um, so, yeah, let's hope that this starts to decrease, the rate starts to decrease very soon. Um, uh, and, uh, and so we'll start to hopefully see this curve bend. Now what I was going to do is look at whether or not I can really see that doubling every two and a half days. So I guess it might be possible to see it sort of like well, maybe you could see it from here, right? From 40,000 to 80,000. That's, you know, from day 22 to day 24, right there. That's about two and a half days right there. And you can see, you know, from day 20, when we're at 25,000, two days later, two and a half days later, we're going from about 25,000 up to about 50,000, right, from day 20 to day 22, something like that. So that's, that's the 
that's the doubling. It's down here, we can see from day 15 at 6,000, around day 17, and it's around 12,000, right? So it's continuing to double every two and a half days because of this 33, roughly 33% growth each day. All right, so I, I think I'll finish the video off here just comparing the growth rates and the doubling time uh, and how the, uh, visually. So, so this is the same data that I'd already typed in, and I have a curve here that is from the regression analysis, uh, 79 at time zero and 33% growth every day fits that data uh, up to the point where uh, we, you know, the last data point that we have. Let's really hope that it is not continuing to double because that puts us at around 100,000 uh, right about now, about, you know, on day 25. So then what I have under, uh, under this curve here is a um, growth rate, um, which I just put as this is the percentage. So this represents 26% growth. And then I use that formula that I just derived previously where I'm just putting this R percent uh, so we can actually just keep it as a whole number here. So this value D is the uh, doubling time in days. So 26% growth means it's going to double every three days. And so if I back this, um, wait, sorry, if I put this to 32% growth rate or 33% growth rate, that's the roughly two and a half day doubling time that we saw, right? This is now fitting the data that we have. So, and I'm graphing both the curve in terms of the growth rate R and in terms of the doubling time D. So I can compare, like increasing the growth rate up to 50%, it doubles every 1.7 days. Of course, if you push this all the way to 100%, 100% growth rate means we have 100 Right here, you could say 100 over 100 makes this a 1, so 1 plus 1, that gives you 2. And uh, you can see that 100% growth rate means that it would actually double every day. So the doubling rate is just one day. Every day it's going to double. Push this growth rate back to maybe 10%. You can see that's about every seven days it will double. And this is exactly why we have these very uh, strict rules on social distancing and uh, reducing the number of, uh, you know, re reducing large groups uh, so that we can lower this growth rate, in fact, actually start to make it a negative growth rate. So um, that's now, of course, what we're all really hoping for, and we'll uh, and I really hope that I can come back soon with some real data to show how the negative, uh, the, the growth rate has uh, decreased, and then actually begins to turn negative and starts to come back down. And uh, yeah, I, I really hope to put that into another video soon. Um, and that would be a case where we could model that changing growth rate uh, and decreasing growth rate with a logistic curve. So I hope to do that soon. Okay, I uh, hope this has been helpful and informative and interesting. And thank you very much for watching.